visited Eden called it a neuroscience of Eden consciousness. Yeah, but I guess you are a better candidate to speak on that because you are working on this area. But uh, I would only have one or two comments to make. That uh, cognitive science today I feel is very much influenced by phenomenology and the concept of embodiment. And I don't know who, I, who has been responsible for it, but at least I see Varela is a, is a very prominent culprit for it because he talks about embodiment, but then if you read his works, there are very encouraging ideas, but then there are also ideas which need much more scrutiny. But in any case, I guess, cognitive enterprises, cognitive sciences, various kinds of cognitive enterprises, uh, gives you very much uh, a grasp of something which is otherwise not possible to explain as a whole in the century. So I, I would think that consciousness is a pet for philosophy, but then if we have to understand it in terms of manipulations, understanding of technologies, re-engineering and all that, we have to perhaps focus on the very minutest functions of consciousness. And therefore we have to come to neuro, I mean cognitive neuroscience. So I'm just going to chair it. I see several hands, so I, I just call, right? Okay. Yeah, you can. Yes. Uh, there is a school of Indian thought which thinks that consciousness is basic to everything. For example, an inanimate object also has consciousness. And then scientific discipline says that consciousness emerges as an epic phenomenon. So is it really possible to reconcile these views or how is it? Yeah, well, <laughs> reconciling is, I think, it may need another thousand years. I don't know. <laughs> but at this point, the demarcation is getting clearer and clearer that there are these different views of looking at it. That, uh, for example, uh, I, 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 since I'm reading Metzinger very really closely now, one of his expression is that uh, uh, consciousness is the appearance of world. Is, is it, I'm, not, I'm not making that, it's exact words which he has used. Consciousness is the appearance of the world. There's an ancient philosopher, my favorite philosopher from India, Shankaracharya, who said, World is an appearance of consciousness. Now these are two distinct viewpoints. It's very difficult to have a dialogue between these two viewpoints. Because you come from two worlds, you come from two ways of looking at it. But then I think what makes us more enriching is to look at how that such a theory is constructed. Because there's a mind which is behind such a theory. So how it is constructed? How what is what, what are the basic you know constituents of such a theory? So reconciling, I don't know about reconciling, but I think they can coexist. And finally, I think it would be good to have, good to have both tangible theories and intangible theories. It's, it's good to touch consciousness, and also it's good to be reminded that you can really not touch consciousness. People like Metzinger allows us to touch consciousness once in a while, and theories which, like what you said, tells us that consciousness cannot be touched. In terms of the psychodynamic version of what Freud gave the tip of the iceberg conscious phenomena. Sorry, repeat it please. No, um, the psychodynamic concept of consciousness in terms of the tip of the iceberg phenomena by Freud and the current studies that are going on in, uh, with the microstate in uh, default mode network. Can we do a justice? I mean, I, I, I mean is, is, that, is that a justice to what has been studied in the past? Okay, the second part of what you said I'm not aware, so I won't be able to comment on it. But uh, if you want to bring in Freud, definitely that will take another, he is my favorite thinker, uh, it will take another, uh, you know, quite a bit of time. But, uh, but I think, uh, if at all we are talking about Freud, what, what is important is, he made a few theories which are still valid in order to understand certain complex neuropsychiatric problems. And it is still not, we are still, we are yet not ready to dismiss Freud. And uh, there are a few concepts which can enrich certain ways of looking at psychiatric uh, issues. The second part of it I am not aware, so I won't be able to comment on it. But you can say about it if you, are, if you wish to. Yeah, I am not working with therapy, but then I have uh, some bad people working in it. Um, it's using EEG and fMRI integration together, and then they are giving, it's a default, I mean, they are analyzing. They don't give them any task, but then 
they subject them for both PG as well as fMRI. So they just rest over the resting phase, through which they are analyzing the microstate of each of the EEG signal and correlating that with the gold signals of the fMRI to see without any task in the resting phase what is the level of consciousness or what to consciousness. So they are trying to quantify the situation. Sure. Using default mode network principle. Yes, Yes, uh, my question is about the very nature of heart problem in consciousness. Uh, uh, the, how physical uh, yeah, is able to create something subjective. Uh, in answering to this question, uh, uh, there are two suppositions. Uh, you know, one is that it's, uh, one is to admit that consciousness is essentially produced from a physical organism. And uh, then it will be, you know, uh, then it will, it, it will reduce to the in answering to the easy problem, easy easy problems. So one way is that that uh, you know hard problems are reduced to the easy problems, and we are we are solving easy problems gradually, and uh, um, maybe in uh, in more one details we'll be able to solve the uh, the hard problems also. But another supposition is that it's not physical. And you know, consciousness is consciousness. Consciousness is not essentially physical. So, what are the other ways then we can address this uh, hard problem of consciousness? Well, um, one of the perhaps not too physical, but uh, it may get reduced to a physical approach, is to look at a minimalistic sense of yourself and find out what are the functions which are very much needed, even when we talk about a minimalistic sense of self. And you may be already aware of this moment. Lots of discussions on this. And these two functions are identified as ownership and agency, right? So there is always a feeling that this is mine. There is always a feeling of owning something. And the first, uh, the first expression of ownership is the owning, owning your own body. You may own several other objects, properties, and so on. Like James said, but then primarily the owning of your own body. So the ownership and agency, which, uh, which talks about a, a, moti a, a motivator or someone behind a particular action, and who is the agent of this action. So even when we talk about a minimalistic self, a sense of self, if we can retain ownership and agency, perhaps we can also bring in a non-physical approach to it. Yes. Uh, is there any experimental way to deal with heart problems? Oh, there are lots of experimental analysis. I told you, uh, you know, all the neurologists are doing that. And uh, not the heart problem. I mean, well, they say it is heart problem. But then brain science is all about working on, you know, working on the Biology of the brain. But uh, getting information about what is, where is what in the brain is not going to lead us to be able Well, that is there. As I told you, there are lots of brain science, brain studies, which tells you what is the seat of memory or what are the uh, electrochemical processes and uh, all, all complex processing happening. All that is there. But then uh, the idea is that. Even if you know the processes behind, let us say, pain, you cannot pinpoint where exactly is pain, as Dr. Feinberg says. Dr. Feinberg says, you may talk about the process, you may chart a route of processes in neurally, neurochemically, or neuroelectrochemically in the brain, but still, your experience of brain, you cannot say, oh, my brain, actually your brain is, uh, you know, you can, uh, the brain has no receptors for pain. The pain, pain. The brain cannot feel pain. But the body feels pain. So where exactly is the center of pain? You don't know. So that is the hard problem. Yes. Yeah, so a uh, question reminds me that, and they, I know one such experiment, uh, the outer body experience, that experiment, experiment where you feel that like your body is sitting in front of you and you are, That's right. yourself is sitting. Virtually you created by the Yeah, yeah, virtual reality. But uh, I really like that experiment, but I'm not sure what that experiment shows. Absolutely. To me, it shows uh, that audit, uh, your visual 
sense uh, input and your character input are Absolutely. dissociated. That's the only thing. You I just think. stole my mind. Uh, in fact, Metzinger talks about this Rebahant illusion and the virtually uh, the uh, lab created out of body OB uh, thing. And, uh, and he uses these two to say that the bodily identification can be manipulated in lab conditions and therefore there is nothing called intact as self. But I, I don't understand. Just because you can make a theory by connecting touch, vision, and proprioceptive <coughs> capabilities, you cannot dismiss self sense at all. And uh, at any time, I think we, all, we have a need to identify with something. And we are not actually talking about why we are identifying with something which is more illusory than real. But then what we are talking about, what is that which is identifying with seemingly illusory or real. So I completely agree with you. Just to yes, comment, uh, actually, uh, I'm reminded of the insight that he famously You're aware of? Wittgenstein. Wittgenstein. It happens, he says in philosophical investigation that if you if you are ever that a problem is uh, in, uh, impossible because it's difficult, I want you to realize that uh, you are under a spell. So you know, so you know, when you say hard problem of consciousness, you should not uh, be suppose that it is impossible to solve. Yeah. Also, sometimes you take any proof to be enough to indicate the absence of consciousness. It has to be certain kind of proofs, right? This rubber, this illusion based exper experiments is a proof, but then that's not a proof to indicate the absence of self sense. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice time in Nias. If there are more days for you to, uh, for you to be in Nias or wherever you are back to your respective centers, disciplines, institutions. Have a great time and uh, may you all do well. Thank you very much.